um, I have a video of Michael Irving that was... Shit. Fuck. Damn. Ow. That hurt. <laughs> Here we go. Damn. Fucking win. Ow. Well, good Sunday morning, friends. Mark Holmes, of course, Joe Boo is holding down the fort at the Red Brick House, but we got Joe Bear up here. Maybe Joe Bear, would you like to come sit down here and take seat number one while Joe Boo's gone? Would you, okay, write in the comments if you'd like to see that. So that way he's holding down here while Joe Boo's holding down the Red Brick House. I hope everybody is having a great weekend. This is it, man. Training camps are opening up around the NFL. Today is the 21st of July. Come the 24th, the Cowboys will be reporting. So I don't know about you. I'm excited. Thursday will be their first practice. And in two weeks from today, two weeks from today, I will be landing in California for eight days of training camp will be there for the Rams practice scrimmage will be there for the preseason game. And then we'll be headed back here to Joe Boo sports man cave. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I can't wait to see the team on the field. And I'm wondering how you, the fans, are you over the off season of our discontent? Will you forgive the Cowboys for doing exactly what they always do, which is absolutely nothing of consequence when it comes to training camp. I'm asking for a friend. Cowboys, they are what they are. As much shit as we give them, you have to at least look at it and say, you know what, they at least can compete. I know people will say it's about Super Bowls, but you know what, there's a lot of teams that it's about Super Bowls, and right now, I'm looking at Kansas City, Tampa Bay, New England, and won by the Eagles since 2017. There's a lot of teams out there that are trying to do the exact same thing as us that aren't going any further than us. It's hard to win a Super Bowl, as we all know. And as much flack as we've given the team, I don't know that there's too many teams that have our problems, that you've got one of the best young edge rushers out there, a multi-purpose tool, and you got to pay him. I'm not sure that um, too many teams are upset because they've got a great wide receiver and they have to pay him. I'm not sure that teams have a quarterback who – has got 36 TDs and only nine interceptions and a runner-up for MVP, setting all kinds of team records, that they would be upset about it. But I get it. We them boys, we the Dallas Cowboys, we the ones with five rings needing to get the sixth. I get it. I get it. But as I look at the roster, we have holes. I'm, and, and I can't say that there isn't any team out there that doesn't have holes. They say that the Eagles have one of the best rosters in football, that they're a shoe-in to win the division. But I look at their linebackers and their secondary, and I say they got some holes there. They got questions at center. They got questions at quarterback. So there's no team that has no question somewhere. Maybe the San Francisco 49ers, they're, they're pretty stacked. They're pretty stacked, although Jason M. does say they their offensive line isn't that great. But be that as it may, other than that, they're loaded. We have to get behind our team because, well, no, actually, you don't have to. But the guys out there on the field, the ones that are signed, they're going to give everything they got to make this team the best team that they can be regardless of what Steven and Jerry Jones do. The question is right now, is C.D. Lamb. Nobody knows for sure if C.D. Lamb is going to hold out through practice or not. Now, he's already lost, I think, $47, 48000000 million for missing OTAs. When we're talking about $35 million, that's really kind of chump change. But the rules changed. The Zeke Elliott rules went into effect with the last CBA. And now what it is, is it's $50,000 per, 
per day when you hold out that is non-refundable. It used to be, you know, a guy would hold out and then eventually he gets the contract, the team would forgive the fines and yada, 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 but now it's no longer there. So looking at this from that standpoint, will C.D. Lamb come in and say basically, you know, I'm doing something good faith with the team. The team needs to be playing in good faith and getting this thing done. I don't know. Nobody knows. And you're going to have to stay tuned to find out. We do have questions and all. Is this going to be the team that we have that we're not going to try and do anything else? We've heard some rumors about the Cowboys uh, possibly interested in uh, T. Higgins. Uh, Mike Fisher has teased about Amari Cooper, who's holding out and maybe returning Amari Cooper. If that were to happen, if the Cowboys ended up bringing back Amari Cooper and it costs him more than a fifth round draft pick. And I don't see Cleveland parting with him for the fifth round pick. Then you really look stupid. You really look stupid. Let's say you give up a third or worse yet a second. Although I'm not, mind you, I'm okay with giving up a second round draft pick because we usually don't have too much luck with those. But if you end up giving up that kind of compensation to bring Amari Cooper back, then you really look stupid. You really do. Um, running back room wise, the question will be, are we going to add anybody else? Are we going to look and say, Zeke, you're going to be our workhorse again, you know, with Rico uh, Dattle? Is that, is that it? Is that it? I mean, you look at this and everybody basically has us as the worst running game of any team out there. This is literally putting everything on Dak Prescott's shoulders, and maybe that's the way Stephen Jones wants to do it because Stephen Jones, of course, when he has to pay, wants to send a message to let you know, because you took so much money, we're not going to get you any help. I don't know. These questions will be answered in the next coming days. Dak Prescott has his birthday in a couple of days, too. It'd be nice for him to be able to get his contract out the way. It'd be nice to have C.D. Lamb there for his birthday celebration to maybe put a cake in his face or something. But we just don't know. But the good thing is we'll be here talking about it. And I don't think that anybody who is a Dallas Cowboy YouTuber or of any other team isn't excited now because this off season has sucked. It has sucked. And so we've had very little good news to talk about. And this is where it would be nice for Stephen Jones to get something done. And I say Stephen Jones, because let's all understand right now from this moment forward, understand that this is Stephen Jones's team. He has been taking more and more and more of the responsibilities in the day-to-day -day operations of the team, and he is the one that is controlling it. Regardless of what Jerry Jones says, Jerry Jones is the figurehead. Stephen Jones is running the Dallas Cowboys, whether you like it or not. This is the way he is going to do business. He is going to be in control of contracts. He's going to be in control of player personnel. He is going to make the decisions, and he is not a risk taker. He is not going to spend a lot of money on free agency. He's going to believe in building through the draft and bottom tier free agents and turning those over and bringing in new ones every year. It's going to be the way the Dallas Cowboys are. Whether or not it leads to a Super Bowl, I have no idea. But this morning, I've got to go over and get some work done because we've got our live stream that's coming up at 5 o'clock. If you are a channel member, the link to call in will be in the community tab. And we're going to be giving away a Randy White autographed print um, here. We're going to be doing a bunch of those now between now and us leaving for Oxnard. Whew. But here we have actually something that's really kind of cool. I actually love this. Michael Irvin. Michael Irvin, who was downsized with um, NFL Network um, and has not created another opportunity um, as of yet, actually has his new sports bar and restaurant. 
the Dallas Cowboys. Excuse me. His sports bar and restaurant that he seems to be having a lot of hands on. And I'm wondering if this is actually by design because with his wife having Alzheimer's, and I probably mispronounced it, um, maybe wanting to be home more with her to help her. Either way, the thing you have to say about Michael Irvin is, is when he does something, he does it all the way. Now, this is a look at some of the food. And, man, I got to tell you, when I get to Dallas, I have got to go there. Oh, my goodness. Let's take a look here this morning. Let's kick off the longest training camp in franchise history of all the Dallas Cowboys. There's only one dubbed playmaker. You know, I can only be talking about pro football Hall of Famer and three-time Super Bowl champion Michael Irvin. And now he's making another play, this time in the restaurant arena. It's called Playmakers 88. Come over, come stand next to me. And he joins me with executive chef RJ, who is in the building. He bought some fabulous food that I'm sure would score a touchdown, which I'm really excited about. So, <laughs> I like it. Good morning to you yes. both. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So glad to have you here. Okay, so Michael, how does Playmakers 88 kind of reflect the legacy and love that you have for football? Well, you, you say love for football. I do love football, but it reflects the legacy and love I have for the Dallas Cowboys. You got to oh. understand, the last almost 40 years of my life, I have spent my Sunday mornings in conflict defending <laughs> my great team, my great city, the Dallas Cowboys, either playing or or on TV somewhere, well, conflict with all the guys that are always hating against our boys. But now I get to watch the games on some Sundays with the people that love the go. Dallas Cowboys, which are the Cowboy fans at Playmakers 88. I'm looking forward to that. Well, let's talk about the fans. So when the fans walk in, their eyes immediately go up to the ring of honor. Why was right. that really important aspect to add into this sports bar? It was the most important aspect for me because when I walked in, the first thing I thought about was, what inspired me the most? Mm -hmm. And every time we stepped on the football field, right before the games, Emmett Smith and I, right in the tunnel, would look at each other. We put our hands here, tap our heart, and we said, "Double trouble." Him being twenty, double trouble. There you go. Eighty-eight. Oh, that means boy. you will lose this game by air or by ground. We will make sure we win. But we also would look up and say to all the guys in the Ring of Honor. I will honor you with our play today. It's what's most inspired me on the field, so it's, it inspires me off the field too. There and I go. want it to be all everybody. Bring your kids out. This is a place we bring your kids. What I'm doing is giving you a visual. Uh -huh. We all pass down yeah. our love for the Dallas Cowboys to our kids. Now I'm giving you a visual to tell your kids. That's Leroy Jordan. That's right what we there. had, That's right? That's a bad man. There That's you why go. I put it up there. <laughs> all right. Well, let's talk about one of the most important parts. It's the food, right? And gosh, this looks good. So, Chef RJ, yeah. Michael has no problem, as you have seen this morning, Not he has all. no problem letting you know what he thinks. So, did you sweat a little bit when you were coming up with the menu? <laughs> I don't think really, I don't really good. sweat because he trusts me. <laughs> yeah. Right. If he didn't trust me, I wouldn't be here. You know, so it's one of the things he's kind of allowed me to have my executive control mm -hmm. and kind of right. come up with the dishes. We understood what the vision was. The vision was we want to be more of an upscale sports Elevated. bar. Yes. Right. You know, we're going to have, of course, the wings and the burgers and, and the normal stuff that you would get. But we're also going to have some upscale things that you can enjoy, you know, at a really nice fine dining restaurant as well by coming over to Playmakers. Oh, you right. got to understand, we go back a long ways. Really? When I was long way. Long way. For Bishop Jake, <laughs> the, uh, you know, way back then. And, and I met RJ in church. We were in church in Cleveland. Columbus. Oh, in, in Columbus. Columbus, Columbus, Columbus. Columbus. Yes. Absolutely. By the time Bishop and I got back, RJ had already moved everything to Dallas. He was waiting. <laughs> he was waiting on you. So he was like, let's get forever. started. So, yeah, let's get yeah, started. Absolutely. All right, yeah. tell me what you brought because I see forks. That means I'm going to be eating breakfast this yes, morning on I, the show. I, I so tell me, what forks. do you have for me? So I have a few amazing dishes that we're going to have at Playmakers. The first one is going to be our chicken option. Okay. That is a Tuscan chicken and mashed potatoes oh, God. with a Tuscan cream sauce, oh, okay, yeah. which is absolutely amazing. Uh -huh. You don't even okay. hit things like that in those sports bars because you watch the game. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Kind of food. Absolutely not. Girl, go on, stop playing now. Stop Shoot. playing. One of the things we That's specialize in. Cool. You keep talking, I'm gonna eat. Yeah, yeah, get that asparagus. The asparagus mm -hmm. is, is, is flavorful by its own by mm, itself. God, no. Okay, well, yeah. It That's yeah. it. So, so we have that. And, and we, we specialize in sauces. We have a lot of great sauces that play mm -hmm. This here is what our is? southern fish over dirty rice mm. with Damn. a Cajun cream sauce. Now, Ooh. that right there, close your eyes and think about being in New mm -hmm. Orleans right there. Go ahead, Ooh. Michael. Get you a little something. <laughs> yeah. This is one of my favorites now. And when I get to work, on, uh, when I get to work, I say, man, 
Y'all, y'all, y'all Can you bring me some out of that? <laughs> okay, what's this? Because that look like crab meat. This right here is our deep fried asparagus. She, she's getting down on the, the food. Crab meat with a lemon butter sauce as well on that. No, Michael, I'm going to need you to slow down because you get to have this on time now. Okay? I'm going to need you to slow she down. Like, Let me try yeah, this. I'm getting my eat on. Uh-huh. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yes, I love it. And this is our amazing chicken and shrimp Alfredo pasta. Hot dog, yeah. Okay. Just, this is, Best. I'm going to try it all. Jane, I'm sorry. It's a no. I'm, I'm packing it all up and it's going with me. Keep playing now. Mm-hmm. Mm. So when I first started cooking, one of the first dishes I've ever made now, What's the last was one this now? right here. This is a salmon and shrimp over a bed of fried potatoes and onions. You know those potatoes your grandma used to cook for you on Saturday morning? Yes, in the morning. morning. Yeah. That's it right there. Ooh, I love uh, it. Salmon and shrimp over the fried potatoes and onions, and that come with a rosemary cream sauce, and that is absolutely That's dynamite. Gorgeous. You can get all this at Playmakers. Michael is eating mm, this wow. like mm-hmm. he has never had it. <laughs> right. Oh, well, my God. I've been cooking for him for years. He knows what this stuff tastes like. <laughs> Shout out to Michael Irvin. I am so happy for him that he has, you know, um, the ability to be able to do so many things. You know, and that's the sad thing about life is there's so many things that people could do if they are given the opportunity and the chance to be able to do it. Um, And seeing Michael Irvin, you can see the love and the joy that he has on there and things. And who knows, maybe you go there, you'll like to see Michael Irvin there. So good, people. We're just going to take it easy this morning. We'll get into it hot and heavy this afternoon. And basically, starting tomorrow, it is nothing but Dallas Cowboys as they prepare to go to Oxnard for training camp. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And I will see you soon. Peace out. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report.